In southwest China, among green mountains lies Erhai Lake, shaped like a human ear and cherished by the Bai people as their mother lake. For generations, Erhai provided clean water, abundant fish, and gentle breezes, nurturing the community's way of life. The people lived in harmony with the lake, respecting its rhythms and teaching their children to honor its gifts. The lake inspired their art, songs, and festivals, its clear waters a source of pride and identity. Villages grew along its shores, built with reverence for nature and guided by ancestral wisdom. Air High was more than a resource. It was the soul of the region, a living presence in daily life. But change was coming. The outside world's rapid development began to reach this tranquil place. The very beauty that made Air High special would soon attract attention that threatened its delicate balance. The story of Air High is a lesson in how easily a natural treasure can be pushed to the brink and how much effort is needed to bring it back. The Mother Lake was about to face its greatest challenge. What happened next would test the community's devotion and resilience. The fate of Air High Lake and its people hung in the balance. Air High's beauty could not remain hidden. As China's economy boomed, tourists flocked to the lake, eager to experience its scenery and buy culture. Locals welcomed the influx, opening guest houses and restaurants to share their home and improve their livelihoods. But rapid, unregulated development brought a hidden cost. Many new businesses lacked proper sewage systems, sending wastewater directly into the lake. The growing population and changing farming methods added to the problem. Chemical fertilizers washed into the water, fueling invisible pollution. The lake, once a source of life, became a dumping ground for waste. The pursuit of quick profit blinded people to the long-term damage. Air High's clear waters and vibrant life were being destroyed by the very activities meant to celebrate them. The mother lake was becoming sick, its balance broken. Pollution and neglect replaced harmony. Soon, the signs of crisis would be impossible to ignore. The community faced a stark choice, continue down this path or fight to save their home. The first warnings were easy to overlook cloudy water, smaller fish catches, and the disappearance of native species. Then, the crisis became undeniable. Algal blooms covered the lake in thick green scum, fed by sewage and fertilizer runoff. The water suffocated, dead zones spread, and a foul odor replaced the fresh air. Tourists stopped coming, and locals could no longer drink or swim in the lake. The ecosystem was collapsing before their eyes. The government and scientists could no longer ignore the evidence. Air High was on the verge of becoming a dead zone, a tragic monument to unchecked development. The region's heart and identity were at risk. The time for small measures was over. Only bold, immediate action could save the Mother Lake. The community braced for drastic change. The fate of Air High would depend on their willingness to act. The next steps would determine whether the lake could be saved. Confronted with disaster, the government launched a sweeping campaign to save Air High Lake. In 2017, all 1,800 guest houses and restaurants in the conservation area were ordered to close, an unprecedented move. The goal stopped pollution at its source. A massive sewage interception ring was built, encircling the lake to capture all wastewater and divert it to advanced treatment plants. Illegal structures on the lake bed were demolished and polluted sediment was dredged away. Cleanup teams removed 40,000 tons of waste, evidence of years of neglect, the measures were painful for locals, disrupting livelihoods and traditions. But the message was clear. The lake's survival came first. The era of sacrificing nature for short-term gain was over. The community faced hardship, but also hope. The radical intervention was the only chance to revive Air High. The lake was on the operating table and the surgery was underway. The world watched to see if the patient could recover. The stakes had never been higher. The fight for Air High's future had truly begun. With the lakefront cleared, scientists finally assessed Air High's true condition. Their findings were grim. Years of pollution had left a thick layer of toxic sludge on the lake bed, rich in phosphorus and fueling ongoing algal blooms. Even with new pollution stopped, the lake's own sediment would keep feeding the crisis for years. Biodiversity had collapsed. Native aquatic plants were gone, replaced by algae and invasive species. The food web had crumbled, and native fish had nearly vanished. Water tests revealed dangerously high levels of nitrogen and phosphorus. Air High was critically ill, its recovery far more difficult than anyone had hoped. The cleanup was not just about removing waste, but healing a wounded ecosystem from within. The scale of the challenge was daunting. 
the community realized that restoring the lake would require patience, innovation, and unity. The path forward would be long and uncertain, but giving up was not an option. Armed with new data, the restoration team went beyond stopping pollution. They set out to heal air high. The completed sewage ring became the lake's shield, sending all wastewater to advanced treatment plants. Treated water was released into newly built wetlands, where plants filtered out remaining nutrients. Over 33 square kilometers of wetlands and green corridors were restored, forming a vital buffer. Strict laws banned harmful fertilizers and pesticides. Farmers switched to organic methods. New construction faced tough environmental standards and patrols enforced the rules. Locals, once hurt by closures, now joined the restoration, planting trees, managing wetlands, and protecting the lake. The focus shifted from exploitation to stewardship. The community found new purpose in jobs and conservation. Changing habits and mindsets was as important as engineering solutions. The lake's recovery became a shared mission. Air High's guardianship was now a source of pride. The groundwork for renewal was set. At first, progress was slow, cloudy water and little life. Scientists warned recovery could take a decade or more, but nature proved more resilient than expected. Within a few years, the water cleared dramatically. Algal blooms vanished and the foul smell disappeared. Sunlight reached the depths and native aquatic plants began to return. Rare species like Otelia acuminata reappeared, stabilizing the lake bed and providing habitat for fish. The ecosystem rebuilt itself from the ground up. Native fish returned and birds flocked back to the revitalized shores. The community was rewarded with the sight of clear water and thriving wildlife. The scientific data confirmed what everyone could see. Air High was being reborn. The lake's revival was faster and more complete than anyone dared hope. The sacrifices and hard work had paid off. Air High's story became a beacon of hope. The mother lake was alive again. The people in their lake had found new life together. Air High's rebirth brought a new era for its people. Tourism returned, but now focused on eco-friendly experiences and conservation. Guest houses and restaurants reopened under strict environmental standards, offering higher quality, sustainable tourism. Locals found new jobs as park rangers, wetland managers, and environmental monitors. Organic farming thrived, with produce fetching premium prices. A green economy emerged, built on a healthy ecosystem. Prosperity and conservation became partners, not rivals. Pride returned to the community. Clear water was a symbol of their achievement. Children learned to cherish the lake, not as a memory, but as a living promise. Air High's story is a message of hope. Even on the brink, recovery is possible. With determination and unity, people and nature can heal together. The journey was hard, but the result is a testament to resilience. Air High Lake now stands as living proof that healing nature is healing ourselves.